All right, gang, here we are, getting ready to roast some coffee. We're gonna put our 150 grams in of green beans, and uh, they're about a little over five ounces. I go by weight, not by volume. A little more accurate because of the greenness. Plug our machine in. Put my lid on. And start our timer. You'll see the beans are moving. You've got good motion on them. That's how you determine how much you can do at a time. The other thing we can do is use our box to control our heat. The air actually comes in right here. I've got the around the areas around it taped off but the intake is actually below here. So we can control our input of our heat by folding our box lid and taking heat from the box area so it preheats the incoming air. We can also use the lid to put over it and channels the heat down into the box and actually that can also change the rate of the roast by closing the lid. So it gives us lots of variables, especially in colder weather. I generally don't want my first crack to come on too soon because it tends to push the coffee a little faster than I want. I want it a little slower ramping up to the roast speed. You'll notice that we've got stuff starting to blow out the top. That's called ch chaff. It's kind of the little bits and pieces of the outside of the bean and uh, because of the shape of the top piece and the narrowing at the top it really blows the chafe out really really well you can see that process going on now you notice our bean color is kind of that green it's kind of good because the box next to it is kind of where we know where our first our roasting stage is starting to get in and then the, the wood to the far left is almost our dark roast color. So that's kind of a good example to see our color range. Now right now you'll notice the greens are multicolored. I've got kind of a mixture in there. Some of them are decaffeinated so they have that different color to them. This is just a mixture to test. Now you notice I've got good action on the beans. That's important. Now at this point, we're about two minutes, two and a half minutes into the roast, okay? And you can start to smell the beans. It kind of gives off of a, almost a bread kind of a smell, kind of a dough rising yeast kind of smell. You'll get the hang of it, but uh, learn to use your nose and develop these different smells. It'll help you a lot in your coffee. Now, as far as uh, roasting and how far you want to roast, Kind of start experimenting with your own taste. Um, a lot of people have recommendations and they're good places to start, but ultimately it's all about your taste. That's part of the reason you do your own home roasting is so you can develop your own roasts the way you like them. Now, the nice thing about this is this is a good means of getting into roasting without spending too much money. And it's pretty darn reliable and consistent as opposed to using a stove or a pan or something like that. Notice that uh, our color started to change. We're starting to get a color of the box. And our smell's changing a little bit. We're coming into a little over three, coming up on four minutes time-wise, so that's really good. Now one thing about this that was really hard is that everybody talks about cracks. First crack and second crack, and I didn't really know what that sounded like. In a few seconds here, probably a minute or so, we're going to start hearing what's called the first crack. Now what that is, is it's going to sound almost like your Rice Krispies in the morning. You're going to get kind of a snap, crackle, pop kind of thing. And you'll hear it, especially with the top. Now I might close the box lid so you can hear, it'll isolate the sound of the fan a little bit better for you. 
but you'll start hearing the first crack and it will start coming on fairly quickly. Okay, we're coming up on about four and a half minutes. Our color is continuing to change. Another thing you'll notice is that the moisture is leaving the beans, but they're swelling. Now there you can hear a little pop, and they're actually swelling a little bit. The beans will swell a little bit as they start the roasting process. Starting to get some good color in them. Our chaff is continually blowing out, cleaning off. You can hear a snap here and there. Still getting a really good roast. Smell is changing. Okay, we're going to isolate the sound a little bit for the camera. Normally I wouldn't do this because it changes the heat a little bit, but I want to isolate that sound so you can hear the snap. Now I'll be quiet for just a second. That would be what we call first crack. You can hear that nice crackling sound coming on pretty good now. And we're just coming up right on six minutes. You can see our time. That's perfect. A little fast. I, 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 I sometimes like it. We're going to continue to let that crack. Now is the time we kind of want to start watching things. And I kind of like to slow my speed down as far as the heat. So I'll open the box if I've got it enclosed. Sometimes I'll even take it out of the box to slow the process between first crack and second. Second crack is kind of a harder thing to know and to explain. The easiest way to explain it for this process is it's more of a tink, because what happens is the beans kind of explode and pieces come off the bean and it kind of hits the side of the glass. So I get kind of a ting sound. And you'll start to hear those in another minute or so. Notice our color is shifting from the box color and now it's starting to go to the side panel color. This is some weathered cedar on the side here on the left side of the picture. Coming along pretty good. Still here in that first crack. Now the first crack will start slowing down and stopping, then you'll have a kind of a lull between that and the second crack. Now I like to stretch the time between the first crack out and the second crack to stretch that out. Now we don't want the heat to go down because then it stops roasting, but we want it to taper and sometimes people will let that between the first crack and the second crack come on too fast. And a lot of times the beans don't have a chance to develop all those fun flavors and stuff. And that's what the roasting does, is we're changing the beans chemically inside. So it's sometimes good to stretch that out. And you can do that with a popper by just varying how preheated this air gets. Take it out of the box, put it in the box, and use that as a tool. And you'll find that you can really adjust your time. Okay, we're coming up a little over eight minutes now. That's pretty good. Okay, we should start getting into second crack. And uh, once we start hearing that, I'm gonna probably shut it down. I'm not gonna go much over second crack. You can do that. As I said, let your tastes be your guide. Now remember after these are all done, to let them rest, preferably overnight. Sometimes even more than a night. Sometimes over two nights. Let the beans off gas and uh, before you grind them up. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Notice there's not too much chaff flying around. Notice our color is really getting that rich color. Rotate this, see if there's a little less dirt on the other side. No, it's got some dust all over it. But you can see the color is getting that really nice chocolate brown. Notice that even with the different beans in there, they're starting to get a lot more similar in appearance. 
got a good carryover. We haven't gotten second crack yet, so that's good. We're coming up on about a little over nine and a half minutes right now. Coming up on ten. We should start getting some second cracks starting to pop on us. And as soon as I hear that, I'll try to be quiet so you can hopefully hear it. Okay, coming up on 10 minutes right now. It's coming right up on 10 minutes. Color is continuing to change. Go ahead and make sure your little strainer or however you're going to cool them is ready to go. Lots of ways of straining them, cooling them. You want to cool them off fairly quickly so they don't continue to roast. Because that roasting process will continue, that carryover heat. So once these get to where we want them, we want to cool them down as quick as possible. That's what the double colanders are for. People use fans and all kinds of different things. Now look at our color. Our color is evening out pretty good. Notice our volume has changed a lot. It's really up into the colander where it started almost down below the line of it. Some of that's obviously the air, but also you can see the volume will change, especially when I turn it off. All right, we're coming up to 11 minutes. Right about now, 11 minutes. We should be starting to hit that crack. I'll be quiet for just a second. You can hear the pop now of the second crack. Okay, that's a rolling second crack. We're going to stop that now because we're getting the tings and stuff. So we're going to sh shut it off really quick, pull our piece out, get our colander, quickly pour those in there. You can hear that second crack popping, get a little, sometimes it'll smoke, maybe a little smoking action. You basically want to Start those cools, you can hear them, that second crack popping. It's a little lot more forceful than the, the first crack. Cool those rascals down. You can see nice rich color compared to our wall and different compared to the box. They've got kind of a shimmer to them. There's a little bit of oil on the surface, but very little, and that's kind of what I like. And uh, as you get into the second crack further and further, the more the oil comes out ahead of time. Now as they'll cool, they'll, they'll oil come out depending on the bean and stuff. But that should give you a pretty good starting point and have a little fun with this. It's a lot simpler than you think. It's kind of one of those things that very easy to do and takes a lifetime to master. But there you got some nicely roasted beans in about 15 minutes total and just using a popcorn popper with the nice bottom and uh, that should do it.